welcome back to Wingredients, where every month I feature one ingredient and show you three things to do with it. This month we are celebrating mushrooms and look at this beautiful bounty that I'm working with today. Now, I know what you're thinking, Sarah, what are you doing to me? I'm not gonna go out and find all these fancy mushrooms. Don't worry. Any of these three recipes you can make with any mushroom you have, and I did that by design. If, however, you're going to make all three of them, <laughs> like I'm gonna do today, you need an absurd amount of mushrooms. And so I use that as an excuse to get some different kinds and we can talk about them. This one you'll recognize. It's um, your standard cremini mushroom, or baby bella. You can get it at any grocery store anywhere in the world. This is called an oyster mushroom, and it's um, to me it has kind of a meatier, gamier flavor. It's almost like the mutton to the cremini's lamb. These are baby shiitakes, which I just thought were really, really cute, and they're grown right here in New Jersey, which I love. And this is my personal favorite. This is called a hen of the woods or a maitake mushroom. And it's got a really mild, really fruity kind of flavor and such a pleasing texture. I just want to put it in everything. Now, I got all these mushrooms at the grocery store, which means they're all farm grown. Hunting for mushrooms or foraging for mushrooms is something that can be very, very dangerous if you're not an expert. So if you don't know what you're doing, just buy your mushrooms at the store. When I think of stuffed mushrooms, I think of an old-fashioned cocktail party, but not necessarily an upscale catered affair. It's more like the dish your mom would make when company was coming over. So this is a mashup of stuffed mushrooms and baked clams, which is something my mom did always make when company was coming over, and it was super easy, but it felt really fancy. I'm going to use the medium to large cruminis for this recipe. I know I literally just told you that you can use any mushroom for any of these recipes. The one caveat is that the stuffed mushrooms have to have a cap that you can stuff. Let's talk about cleaning mushrooms for a minute. So there's this widely accepted belief that you can't put mushrooms in water because they're like sponges and they'll soak up all the moisture and they'll always be soggy. I believe this to be a myth. Um, unless the mushroom is super duper delicate, you can put it in water, it's not going to ruin it, it's not a gremlin. Um, just dry them as soon as you can. So what I do is I just put them in a bowl of water, and I just mix them around with my fingers to get all the dirt off. If they're packaged, there won't be too much dirt on them anyway. And then I immediately just transfer them to a towel and dry them as best as I can. Oops. To prep these mushrooms, I'm going to remove the stem by twisting it, just like that. And then I'm going to use a spoon to clean out the inside of the cap. I'm removing the gills, that's what those are called, and just cleaning up the edge of the cap a little bit. And I'm just doing this to make it a little more concave so there's more room for the filling. And don't throw away the stems because you're going to chop them up and put them in your filling later. Now that I've got my lovely mushroom caps, I'm going to toss them with olive oil and salt and pepper. I want them to be really well seasoned on their own, otherwise they're not gonna stand up to the really flavorful filling. And that's what we're gonna work on next. I've got a tablespoon of oil in my skillet and that's being heated on medium. And to that I'm going to add my chopped mushroom stems, some onion, some bell pepper, and I'm using red and green because it's pretty and it's festive if you wanted to serve this for the holidays. And 
and two cloves of garlic. And you can add all this to the pan at the same time. I'll saute this for about five minutes until it's noticeably reduced by half. Oh, and I'm starting to smell that garlic and that onion. Yum. When my mushroom mixture is reduced, I'm gonna bring it over here and add the rest of my ingredients, which include a can of chopped clams, juices reserved, because we're gonna make a sauce out of that later. Um, four, three or four strips of cooked bacon chopped. The bacon is totally optional in this recipe, but that's where the casino comes from. And if I didn't include bacon, I'd have to call it clam stuffed mushrooms, which just doesn't sound that appealing. All right, and some parsley. Half a cup of breadcrumbs. These breadcrumbs are homemade, by the way, and I have the recipe up on the website if you're interested, but otherwise, store-bought is perfect. A squeeze of lemon juice. From about half of a, one half of a lemon. About two tablespoons of Parmesan cheese. And give it a good mix. I've got my filling ready to go. I've got my mushroom caps. I have a sheet pan and my oven is preheated to 400 degrees. I'm ready to stuff. Pile them high and don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. And I'm going to give them a drizzle of olive oil over the top, just to encourage them to brown. And I'm going to put them in the oven at 400 degrees for 15 minutes. And while they're in there, I'm going to make a three ingredient sauce to go over the top. Now I've wiped out my skillet that I did the mushrooms and peppers in. I'm heating it over medium and I'm going to add four tablespoons of butter, and two cloves of garlic. I'm adding them at the same time because I want the butter and the garlic to sort of heat up together, and that way the garlic won't burn and the butter will melt nice and slowly. Now my butter is bubbling, my garlic is starting to smell really fragrant. I've got my clam juice here that I reserved from the can of clams earlier. And I'm just gonna whisk it in. Slowly so it incorporates. And butter doesn't seize up. When it starts to bubble again, I'm going to turn off the heat and I'm going to squeeze in my second half of lemon. And that's it. That is done. And my mushrooms are done. See how brown and crispy they look on the top. If, um, if, if some of them kind of fall apart while they're cooking, don't worry, just kind of put them back together. You might have to use a spatula and your fingers to get them safely off of the, off of the sheet pan without falling apart. Look how beautiful these look. I'm glad I used the red and the green peppers. Now I've got my sauce that we made in a gravy boat and I'm going to pour it over the top. Gorgeous. And if you want to finish these with something green, 
a little bit of parsley. This is looking so rich and decadent. It's ready for a party. Shall I taste one? I'm excited. Mmm. I get garlic and onion and lemon and clams and of course the mushrooms. I'm so glad that I seasoned those caps beforehand because the mushroom taste is really coming through. And this clam sauce is really, really decadent. Really good. The next dish I'm gonna demo for you is a simple pantry-friendly pasta dish, perfect for a weeknight, and you really can use any mushrooms you have. There's a couple of things I wanna keep in mind before I slice these mushrooms. I wanna think about how I wanna eat them in my pasta. I want them to be a good size that I can bite into and I want them to still look like mushrooms. I'm also gonna keep in mind that they're gonna shrink by about half when I cook them. So with those two things in mind, I'm going to keep the stems intact for the most part and slice them into little mushroom shapes. The really, really tiny shiitakes, I'll just leave them whole. How fun are those gonna be to eat? I'm already boiling water for my pasta. I'm using whole wheat penne in this recipe. You can use any pasta you want, but I recommend a short pasta shape because I like the way I can grab equal mushroom and pasta with my fork when I'm eating it. And I also really like the flavor of the whole wheat with the mushrooms. It makes this dish really hearty. Now to my skillet, which I've got over medium heat, I'm adding one tablespoon of butter, two tablespoons of olive oil, and two cloves of garlic that I've minced. Again, I'm adding the garlic and the fat to the pan at the same time because the garlic is gonna flavor the oil as it heats and it's gonna prevent it from burning. When the butter is completely melted and bubbling, that's when I'm gonna add my mushrooms. And I'll season them well with salt and pepper. When the mushrooms start to soften and to release a little bit of liquid, I'm gonna sprinkle a teaspoon of flour over them. And that's gonna absorb some of that liquid, but it's also gonna mix with the fat and give some structure to the sauce, similar to how, if you were making a roux, how that would function. After about a minute or two of sauteing, the mushrooms are starting to brown and the flour is starting to stick to the bottom of the pan. So I'm going to deglaze it with one or two tablespoons of white wine vinegar. sort of scrape up all that flavor from the bottom of the pan. Let's check our pasta. It 
when my pasta is ready, I'll turn the heat back up to medium. And using a slotted spoon, I'll just transfer my pasta to my pan of mushrooms. I'm doing it this way mostly so I don't forget to save the pasta water. I can't tell you how many times I've drained pasta in a colander and just threw it all down the drain without thinking. And the pasta water is really important in this recipe. It really brings it together. Um, you want to add up to a quarter cup of pasta water. I let a little bit in with my slotted spoon, but I'm going to give it just another tablespoon or so. And I'm also going to add some chopped fresh thyme. Thyme is so good with mushrooms. And I'm going to let this all cook together for just another minute or two until the sauce is thick enough that it coats the pasta. I can't wait to eat this. I'm going to finish it with lots of Parmesan cheese. Little chili flakes. just another sprinkling of thyme. Make it green and pretty. This really is one of my favorite dinners. Mm. Those mushrooms are so flavorful and the garlic and the thyme, they just kind of lift it. Um, Underneath all of it, you have this this earthy, nutty base of the of the whole wheat pasta, and then the vinegar, which which just brightens it up with acidity. It's so simple, but it's so complex. for you today is the ultimate vegetarian comfort food. It is my mushroom shepherd's pie. Now some people call this a forager's pie, but as you know I foraged for my mushrooms in the aisles of Whole Foods, so that's not really accurate in this case. The first thing I'm going to do is get my potatoes boiling. In this pot I have five average sized Yukon Gold potatoes that I chopped into half inch to inch pieces. I'm going to cover them with water, salt it, and bring them up to a boil until they're soft enough to mash. My potatoes are over there boiling and I've gotten started on chopping my mushrooms. I'm going to chop my mushrooms into a small dice for this recipe. I'm not going to be precious about it. They don't have to be a uniform size, but I want them to resemble ground beef or lamb that you would normally find in a shepherd's pie. Trust me, you will not miss the meat in this pie when it comes to flavor. It's going to be an umami explosion. The only downside to using mushrooms instead of meat is that they shrink so much when they cook, you have to use so many mushrooms. I have a pound and a half of mushrooms here, and this pie is going to feed two people. So you do the math. It's just a lot of mushrooms to check. Next thing I'm going to do is make a little gravy to put on this mushroom pie. Um, I promised you that we would not skimp on flavor and I am going to deliver. We've got about two teaspoons of tomato paste, another two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, and a quarter cup of soy sauce. That's gonna be great. I have to do something that I don't usually like to do with this recipe, which is use two pans. 
I need a really big pan to saute my mushrooms because as we know, there's a lot of them. But once they shrink down, they're gonna get lost in there. So to bake it and to assemble my pie, I'm gonna use this little eight inch skillet. So sorry, future Sarah, for having to wash two pans, but you're welcome for browning the mushrooms properly. I've got a tablespoon of oil in my big skillet and I'm gonna add my mushrooms along with a whole chopped onion. I'll give them a stir. and a really, really good seasoning. It's only been two minutes, but see how much they shrunk already? You thought they weren't gonna get brown in this pan. <laughs> I don't know if you thought that. I thought that the first time I tried to make this recipe. It's been about five minutes and my onion is starting to look translucent. So I'm gonna add my garlic, two cloves, and a generous teaspoon of fresh chopped rosemary. You can use thyme as well, but I wanted to mix it up. I'll let that saute for a minute or two to get fragrant. And once I start to smell it, I'll go ahead and add my gravy. And I'm just gonna let this chill out over low heat while I work on my potatoes. And I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of sour cream. You could make these mashed potatoes vegan by substituting your own dairy-free mashed potatoes, but I always put sour cream in my mashed potatoes. I think it's some kind of genetic memory from my Eastern European roots. And I'm gonna taste them for salt. Remember, we salted the water before, so I don't wanna salt them again before I taste it. I am going to add a little bit of more and a little bit of pepper. I'll mash these till they're smooth, then I'll spoon them over my mushroom mixture in my small skillet, bake it at 400 degrees for 20 minutes, and then broil it on high for five. Here she is. Oh, she looks pretty. Let's garnish with a little green. I've got some rosemary and chives. I cannot wait to dig into this. The problem with shepherd's pie is that it's not very pretty once you plate it. <laughs> it's just like a big old mess with some mashed potatoes. But, oh, it's gonna be good. I can smell the garlic and the rosemary. Oh, I wish you could smell it. And let's give it a taste. Mm. Those mushrooms are seasoned really, really well with that umami explosion of tomato and mustard and soy sauce. And the potatoes are perfect, so creamy. Comfort food at its finest, perfect for this time of year. 
And there you have it, three ways to win with mushrooms this month. Thank you so much, friends, for coming on this mushroom journey with me. It's been so fun. These recipes and more can be found on Wingredients.com. Subscribe if you like what you see. And from my family to yours, happy holidays. Wishing you many, many kitchen wins. 